Hey fellow riders, I am in front of Horizon Bench at Bayfront where I will be riding this e-bike through the Marina Bay boardwalk towards Gardens by the Bay and then cross over the dam at Marina Barrage. After the crossover, I will cycle back to Bayfront and take the train back to Chua Chukang where I will perform a series of rides around my neighbourhood. After which I will share what my experience was like using this e-bike. If you would like to skip straight to the review then fast forward to the timestamp as shown below but I hope you will join me as I cycle through one of the most scenic cycling routes in Singapore. My wife and I have been using this e-bike for the past 10 days for different purposes. As a result, both of us ended up with very different opinions about this e-bike. But more on that later. Let's start with my experience. The good and the not so good. Now, full disclosure, although this e-bike was loaned to me by Raintree Habitat for review purposes, the opinions uh, expressed in this video are based on my real-world experience for the past uh, 10 days. This is my first time riding an e-bike fitted with a torque sensor hub. As it is a front mounted motor, I was actually a bit wary about how it would handle. But to be honest, I did not find any difference. It turns corners and the, tra and the traction felt like any other e-bike. On slopes, it was actually easier to paddle as I just needed to maintain a constant effort going up the slope. I observed the torque sensor motor seems to use less power as the battery did not drain as fast as a cadence motor. The system senses how hard I am paddling on uh, my entire ride and uh, it actually sends signals, if I'm not mistaken, to the motor to adjust the power output. Due to this, it makes the best use of every stroke without wasting battery power. And this actually translates to a different type of riding experience when using the speed modes. Now, this e-bike has actually five speed modes. The five speed modes offered in this e-bike are a mixed bag. Modes 1 and 2 offer very little pedal assistance. Mode 3 onwards is actually where I found the e-bike speed kicking in significantly so that I can feel a difference while paddling. On a typical rear-mounted e-bike, you have the motor, battery and the rider at the back which means it is hard to paddle without power. On the Alps S7, the motor hub is on the front, the battery in the middle and the rider is at the back. 
This ensures a more even weight distribution across the bike instead of concentrating all the weight at the rear. In fact, my journey from the Marina Bay boardwalk to the Helix Bridge at the beginning of this video, I was actually cycling without any paddle assist turned on. It came really close to the feel of riding an ordinary bicycle, especially with the 7 speed Shimano gears. The gears proved to be extremely useful when riding in manual mode. Now, the default tyres are CST, which are pretty good tyres. Traction was good while riding on roads as well as park connectors. The size is at 16 inch, with the width being 1 and 3 8. The tubes comes with Presta valves, so make sure to use the correct adapter when inflating the tyres. The ability of the Alps S7 to fold into a compact form factor ensures you can bring it in your car, carry it up the bus or roll it into the train. However, when you fold it, the motor and disc brakes are folded to the left of the e-bike. This causes it to lean towards the left while being pushed. However, after a few days of use, I found myself compensating by applying more pressure towards the right automatically and I could wheel it without worrying it might topple over. The left-leaning weight means I have to be careful placing it on uneven ground as it might topple over. The lack of a braking light is a minor inconvenience. The red light at the back is a manual light with a switch to turn it on, which means I have to remember to stop and get down to turn it on when it gets dark. Now, coming back to the disagreement between my wife and me. We are both casual cyclists. We like to go cycling on the park connectors once a month or whenever we feel like it. She absolutely adores this e-bike as she can use it for short commutes within our neighborhood to the supermarket or travel to her friend's place from Chua Chukang to UT. The compact design is aesthetically pleasing to her. She can fold it, unfold it, tuck it, tuck it away in a corner or make it the centerpiece of the house. The fact that it's a cheaper alternative to the Brompton Electric is another plus for her. For me, tech-wise, there are other cheaper e-bikes which offer more power and better range at a lower cost. But without the superior torque sensor motor or ability to fold into an aesthetically pleasing compact form factor which can accompany me everywhere and anywhere. This e-bike is mainly targeted at social riders, the elderly and non-athlete riders. It serves as a mobility device which is easy to transport by cars, buses or trains. Its trifold design means you can bring this to anywhere around Singapore to try out different cycling routes without breaking a sweat. If you are interested in this e-bike, I recommend test riding it at 3007 UB Road. Remember to contact them before heading down as the test rides are by appointment. Contact details, I will place them in the description box below. The Alps S7 DR comes in five attractive colors and is available for purchase from Lazada, Shopee and Carousel. Contact details are in the description box below. If you have any questions or wish to express your take on the Alps S7 DR, comment down below. Ride safe, be safe. Thank you for watching. G-Man signing off.